there's going to be a lot more listening and watching on that end than there is going to be on this end, but that's okay. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time again. This is uh, this is great. We're getting back together. This is our first official kind of Facebook Live, Instagram Live uh, preview of an episode. So I'm really excited. And uh, who better to do it with than with you, man? Thank you so much. Uh, not a problem at all. Thanks for having me again. So let's, um, I wanted to, um, we're going to keep this super light, super friendly, just kind of, we're not going to take up too much anybody's time. I know it's, um, it's, whoa, it's still early um, where you are and it's uh, getting a little late over here. So, um, but I did just want to quickly just kind of check in with you guys and really um, wanted to kick off the conversation with asking you being in Australia about how COVID-19 is affecting you guys there. And I wanted to give some of the American audience a little bit of perspective from a global side of, of like, you know, literally on the other side of the world, how you guys are dealing with it, what you're seeing. And then, you know, we could talk about it from this side too, and just give a little bit of a comparison. Yeah, sure. So, um, just making sure everyone heard that, um, Nate just asked about how, um, yeah, COVID-19 is, uh, how, how it's all going here in, um, down under. And, uh, yeah, Nate, um, we, in comparison to other countries, and certainly in comparison to the US, and obviously there is a population size difference, but if you look still at the numbers per capita, I guess, we are doing extremely well. Uh, we have only had a hundred and something. I, I don't. I have, haven't looked up the numbers as of today, but it's still a, only a hundred and something deaths in the whole of the nation since this all began. Oh, that's great. In saying that, but, yeah, it's it's great. But in saying that, our biosecurity in Australia is extremely strict. It always has been because we're an isolated island nation. And so biosecurity and protecting our borders uh, from incursion of uh, exotic pests and disease has always been paramount um, and high, you know, in our policies. And anyone who's entered Australia uh, would um, would know, um, you know about you know, going through the border checks and, and uh, not just customs, but uh, quarantine, biosecurity checks as well. Uh, we're, we're extremely strict. so. Therefore, with the virus, even though it, it did get into Australia, um, where the government's put in so many measures, it's highly, highly like it's regulated. There's a lot of strict measures they're put in, uh, which the majority of people are abiding by, and the police are fully enforcing them. Like, if you don't do the right thing, if you're not following the regs, you, you will get fined here in Australia. Yeah, they're actually putting people in jail. Um here as well for not following some of the guidelines in some scenarios how about now are you guys seeing are those measures still as strict as they were are you seeing things lighten up um and also too were did you feel like they treated this virus tremendously different than other experiences and do you feel like that was warranted or I was just asking about uh, the current state of affairs now. Are they are they are you still under very strict and rigorous measures, or are you seeing some of that back off? Yeah, yeah, not not really back off. Um, in uh, certainly in my state and a couple of others, it's uh, we've had a second wave. The first wave here in Australia was there was hardly anything. It was basically almost non-existent here. Um, when they started all the uh, strict measures. Uh, then they did a, a little loosening of them. Uh, and we have had a second wave, especially in Victoria um, and uh, New, South, New South Wales a little bit as well. Uh, the other states are keeping their, their borders are pretty much uh, shut. Um, so there's hard border closures in, uh, in certain states as well. Um, to protect those to protect those states uh, from um, where the where the virus hotspots are in Australia. Uh, so yeah, it's it's still it's still very strict um, here at the moment. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, we did see the the 
surge come back and it's been a it's been a very interesting perspective over here kind of seeing how it's gone back and forth hey i did get a request from one of my viewers watching on my end they were asking if you could kind of come back into camera a little bit more it looks like the, your head's getting chopped off a little bit there you go oh, <laughs> and, and and it wasn't a and it wasn't a some uh stalker dude either it was actually one of my female viewers so not to not, not to think anybody's peeping on you but Trying to stay in view of uh, your your camera and also uh, my Instagram feed. I know, right? We're trying to juggle a Facebook live feed, an Instagram live feed, and doing this on Zoom of all places, which I was not even the intended platform. I had a completely different platform worked out for this, but you know, such is life. Um, but anyway, so it's good to hear about how things are going there. I wish things were getting a little bit more back to. I was hoping things were getting a little bit more back to normal for you guys, being that the 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 caseload was so much lighter, um, but um, but that being said, I did want to ask about you and take a couple minutes. So, you know, the last time we talked, well, the first time we talked, you had just had the spill. We actually had to reschedule, and then we did our interview, and and it was looking like your tailbone was going to be okay. But I guess you're you've had a you've had an update since then. What's going on with your your coccyx? Yeah, so for um, any of the viewers or listeners who don't know, um, I had a, a big fall down my internal uh, timber staircase uh, around a month ago now. Uh, I just, uh, it was in the morning, and uh, I basically, uh, I think one of my joints uh, gave way, and um, I went from the top tread to the bottom, so about 13 treads or 13 steps in total in the timber. Uh, so it wasn't very pretty, and uh, I was in obviously a lot of pain, and, and uh, the most dominant pain was in my tailbone. Uh, so I ended up going to casualty and to be checked, and they initially just thought I had, you know, some small um, uh, cracks and, and real bruising uh, down there. Uh, but it was over two weeks later, and I was still in so much pain, and um, so we went and got some, uh, some scans done. And um, like some thorough scans done, and um, yeah, and it showed a fracture, like quite a quite a significant fracture in my um, S3. Oh wow! So even further up too. That's why I was in so much pain. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's uh, it's been feeling a lot better because I've been trying to take it real easy and not do too much here around the farm. Yeah, that's, uh, well, it's funny because it was like, I'm over here talking about what a tough girl you are and what a badass, and like, right out of the gate, you come in injured. It's like, what's going on? <laughs> but uh, but I'm glad to hear that things are on the mend. Um, I, like I said, when we when we first found out about it, I, we didn't think it was going to be quite as serious, so I'm glad you were getting the proper care now. That's that's what's super important, right? So one of one of the things that we neglected to cover um, on the podcast interview that that I really wanted to talk about was an issue that that affects uh, my family because I have two daughters that deal with hip dysplasia, um, but you also have a, a joint disorder that has impacted you early on and and even now continues to um, be an issue that you deal with. Could could we take just a real quick few minutes to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. So um, I was born with uh, joint heart mobility uh, syndrome. Uh, uh, specifically, it's uh, it's a it's a connective tissue disorder. So it's uh, called Eschler's Danlos syndrome. Uh, so that's a syndrome that affects the connective tissue, in particular the, the collagen um, in the body. Uh, there's different types of SLS Denmark or EDS. Uh, I have the joint heart mobility type uh, known as the type 3. And yeah, so um, so my joints are basically very heart mobile or very loose. Uh, and uh, it, it hardly affects uh, my mobility. Um, but I've been very, very lucky that because of the way I've been since a child, I've I've just always just, you know, kept in physical activity and sport and never let the fact that I moved differently uh, stop me from doing anything. And my family um, weren't very sympathetic to, to my condition. They were just like, well, you're going to run, you're going to hike, you're going to play sport. 
you're going to do everything else that keep is, up we don't, we don't care that you run funny and you look funny and people tease you like just get over it and do it um so i did and uh because of that that's really helped me because um what's happened is that my muscles have adapted to hold me basically together because the joints are so loose the, the muscles have become really strong um and tight and and so so hence i can still walk and run i mean i'm not running at the moment because i'm fine right obviously but, um, normally i can i can hunt and run and 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 uh, i'm very actually very physical for a woman my age um it, it actually gives me more ability than the average person <laughs> more flexibility <laughs> certainly right <laughs> Right, exactly. Yeah, in a, in a way, it kind of is. Like, uh, I can do, generally, I can do a lot more than a lot of other, you know, almost 40 year old women, um, than physically. Right. Um, so, so, yeah, so that's, that's the condition, but unfortunately, uh, with it, despite my muscles being strong, uh, uh, I can at any point in time, uh, you know, have a joint just give way. Have my knees just collapse from under me. Um, I could be holding something and my wrist just goes. Man. Um, and we happened uh, at the top of the stairs. We think a joint gave way either my knee or my ankle. It happened so fast I don't know. Yeah. And hence why I fell down the stairs. Mm. Scary stuff. Well, I found it really interesting um, that you didn't really even get diagnosed with that properly until you were in the military until you got into the royal australian air force um so and, and that was uh a... go ahead yeah yeah like it was something where um i knew i was joint hypermobile but because i was so physical i didn't think it was going to be a problem you know i could pass everything i could run fast i can you know, i can do all the physical things and I'm strong, so I didn't think it would be an issue, but it, it obviously is an issue, and um, you can't really have somebody who's one minute going to be fine, and the next minute they need, you know, keep waiting there on the ground. Right, become a liability out there on the battlefield for sure, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <coughs> well, that, I, I, that was the other area of your life I felt like, and going back and listening to the podcast, I felt like I did not do a very good job of covering. So uh, as we wrap this up, I didn't want to take too long with this with this preview, but I did want to uh, see if there was a story or experience from being in the Royal Australian Air Force that you would mind sharing with us or some kind of personal experience about that. Yeah, I'll tell a story. I'm just uh, having a look at some questions. Um, oh, did you see? Comments. Thank you guys. Uh, I think Scott said he's asking which part of Australia am I in. So, um, yeah, so I mean, um, I'm down in Victoria um, at the moment. Okay, Scott, so just answering that one. Not too sorry. Oh, sorry if I missed um, some other questions. Um, yeah, so my little story, um, uh, I've got a few, but one that comes to mind. Uh, I remember um, during recruit training, so your basic training and it was our first time out bush well we say out bush like out, you guys say out in the woods out bivouac so uh yeah so there were recruits and they got us out bush and teaching us how to set everything up you know to be out bush and survive out bush and, and anyway they're always yelling at you like that's all they're doing recruit training and, um, <laughs> and they, some they, things they, are the same that, um, <laughs> together yeah, yeah, that's always good. And uh, screaming swear at you. <laughs> Nothing's good enough. Um, apart from this one particular time where um, they, uh, they're they screaming at us and we're going to set up our, our cookies, so like our little tents that we sleep under. And um, anyway, I've got to rig it up. And anyway, I'm there like trying to do it because we're going to do everything so fast. And I'm there putting together this cookie. And anyway, I get it together and it's not that great. Doing that, we was actually going to stay up. And next thing, they scream at us again to run back to this other point. 
And then we all run, I, know, you know, I had to drop everything and we run back there, so we run back there, line up. And then they scream at us to run back to and stand at our kitchen to be inspected, see how we're gone. And anyway, if I run back to what I think was my coochie, now it's in the middle of the bush and everything looks the same. And everyone here looks the same. So I run back to this one and I stand there at attention. And anyway, whilst I'm standing there, I'm kind of look at being this coochie and I thought, I don't think this is my coochie. And this coochie was like the best coochie in the world. Whoever had strung it up had done it's like an awesome job. Spot on. And the corporal comes along, and he and he's looking at it, and he looks at me, and he he's gone, excellent work, strong, and then marches off, and I'm just there thinking, oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> the person who's got my <laughs> <laughs> feeling bad for whoever got stuck with your setup, right? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Oh, man, so it's good to blind luck every once in a while, right? Better to be lucky than good, right? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Brooke, hey, listen, I really appreciated uh, getting the opportunity to interview you. And, uh, man, it was so much fun. And, uh, and and this is the first time we've done one of these. And, gosh, you have just been so incredibly humble and helpful and, and so willing to help promote. And, you know, it's really interesting when you do some of these um a lot of the guests you talk to, they're, they're, they're all, they all say, you know, hey, we want to help. Hey, we're going to follow up. We're going to do this and that. And then when it comes down to it, a lot of them don't necessarily always follow through or don't do all, always do the things that they say they're going to do. And you have gone above and beyond in promoting the show, helping me out, helping me with the social media stuff. And gosh, I'm just so incredibly grateful. I'm gra- grateful to know you. I'm grateful that I reached out to you. Um, and I hope that this is a long relationship that we continue to develop. And I, uh, <clears throat> before we go, I do want to talk real quick about the updates, any updates on the book or when folks can ex- expect the last chapter of the trilogy of Bianca Beretta and what's going on with all of that. Uh, yeah, this um, this third book that I've been writing is uh, being a bit slow. It's definitely been the, uh, I'm taking my time. Um, but yeah, with everything kind of going on, like this year and things. Um, Pretty understandable. Yeah, yeah, in Australia, like as uh, anyone who listens to the podcast uh, would know that um, you know, we had the bushfires uh, where I am at the start of the year, and then all this stuff that's going on now, and uh, just um. Yeah, but so it kind of interrupts like your whole flow, like in your brain. Well, especially for doing what you have to do, that's incredibly hard, man. You have to be in that, like we talked about that, that right mind state. Yeah. Yeah, um, but it's coming along. I mean, I, I wrote three, uh, sorry, two chapters uh, yesterday. Um, oh. So. Great. Yeah, if I just start uh, piece, like you know, every week with a few chapters, then uh, we're over halfway through. So we're well over halfway through, so, um, and like the endings already have, have been written, so nice. um, we're just picking a few things out to get to, you know, to get to that point. So, so I'm really hoping for uh, a 2021 uh, release, so at the start of next year. That was going to be my next question, when yeah, it's coming out. Fingers crossed, and uh, with everything in the world, like, yeah, it's it's at, at this point as long as you're just baby steps moving forward, making progress, it'll all come together when it needs to. So don't worry about that one bit. Um so what what am I leaving on the table? What are we any more questions from your audience they want to know that I should be asking you? We we should have done this the other way. I should have done your Facebook Live or your Instagram Live and you should have taken over my Facebook. That way we could have been on each other's feed and I could get your questions and you could get mine and back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Well, Anything that, they're, that they're, your crew wants to know about? A lot of people. Uh, just, a, just a lot of people. Um, yeah, just want to um, I just wanted to say uh, to, uh, to everyone watching, if you only just joined, um, then I'm here with uh, Nate Garrison, who's the host of uh, the Extraordinary Podcast, and uh, I'm his latest uh, guest. So 
if you uh, go uh, onto his um, Instagram, uh, this is the Extraordinary Podcast, and on my story I've got a few of the links. And uh, yeah, if you go on that, uh, you can uh, check out his, um, his podcast and um, you can get onto the um, download his podcast for free, can't you, Nate? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, check out the website, check out the podcast, and feedback. Love the feedback. So tell us you hate it, tell us you love it, just tell us something. Yeah, you love the feedback, people. Oh, hi. A few people are saying hi, Nate. Hey. From the south of... I've got one of my followers who always calls me, um, he's goddess. He calls me the goddess, so it's so nice. Nice. He's like, hi from Texas. Nice. Hi. Oh, he's from the South, too. Man after my own heart. Yeah, well, you've got to... Yeah, lots of my friends and followers are from the South, aren't you guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but that's the whole thing. It's, you know, that whole country thing. Oh, before we go, um, speaking of all your fans, you just got to shout out to a couple of them. I know you do have a lot of other brands that support you and that you support. Um, Is there anybody else like that that you wanted to give a shout out to or anybody that you wanted to plug or promote or... um... Anything like that before we before we get off? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, one of the um, the brands that I've been um, working with uh, uh, really recently is uh, at Second Rodeo Clothing. Yeah. Um, and uh, followers would uh, know about them now. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm really uh, behind um, his name's Anthony, who, who runs at Second Rodeo Clothing, and he's an Aussie Army vet. He's, uh, he's still in, but just in reserves, and because uh, he's doing his, his clothing line, uh, pretty much as his full time full time work, and uh, he's really trying to get uh, into the U.S. market as well, because his uh, goal is to um, uh, have uh, be able to distribute out of the, the U.S. as well as Australia and employ um, veterans, so not just Aussie veterans, but awesome. US veterans as well. Yeah, so the U.S. Yeah, folks, make yeah. sure you guys check them out. Second Rodeo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At Second Rodeo clothing, it's really uh, high quality. Um, you know, country cross uh, streetwear. Um, and they have a really cool website or a cool Instagram account too. They have really cool. I've, I mean, you're, half of your stuff's in there, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, thanks. But um, but yeah, that that country living—that's the theme of the show, and that's um, or just that that lifestyle design, really. Um, and you know, getting back with nature, and you do a great job of promoting that on Instagram and promoting everything that you do on Instagram. It's a it's a great thing. So really grateful to to know you and to be able to steal a little bit more of your time. And when the when the next book comes out, I wanted to get you back on the podcast because I wanted to spend a I'd like to spend an entire episode just talking about writing fiction. And the process behind it, like you just said, you had the finish, you had the end already done, but you're still working on the front side and how that process works. That fascinates me. So we'll get real nerdy on that with just me in the next, on the next one. But um, tell all your fans, thank you for following you and thank you for supporting the show. And thanks for giving us a listen. And um, we'll look forward to getting you back on again soon. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Nate. Thanks. So- I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure you guys can all hear Nate and um, yeah, that he just said a big uh, thank you for tuning in and um, um, supporting me. I really appreciate it. And if you can get on and um, support Nate at Extraordinary Podcast, that'd be cool as well. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll do it again soon. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. All right. Take care. Yeah, you enjoy your evening. All right. Okay, take care, Nate. Bye.